As with all Platinum Cure silicones, wearing latex gloves is a no-no. Latex can inhibit the cure of the silicone, so you do not want to go there. If you need to wear gloves and you want some hand protection, you wear some of the uh, nice uh, nitrile vinyl gloves, okay, those will do the trick. I'm going to mix this up as per the instructions, one to one ratio. I'm going to mix it by weight. Now, the official way to figure out how much you need in the way of the amount of silicone is to take the length of your mold box, the width of your mold box, and the height of your mold box from the inside, multiply those numbers together, you come up with your total. You then divide that by the volume indicator of the product, which in the case of the 7320 is 25.0. That will give you 1.33 pounds. So you need 1.33 pounds of product. However, to measure it more exacting, it's best to go convert that to grams, grams, grams. It's best to convert that to grams. Uh, there are all kind of online uh, conversion tables that you can that you can access. Um, what it comes out to, as seen here, the numbers come out to 603 grams. You divide that by two because you need for the part A and part B, okay? And you come out with 301.50 grams each, part A, part B. However, I've been doing this, making small molds about this same size long enough, I just kind of eyeball it. And I'll just take an educated guess how much I need. Sometimes if, it's, if I don't have quite enough, I'll mix up another quick batch and fill that over. But we're going to go with what would be my usual for a, a box this size. I'm going to go about 300 grams a piece. And I've got a nice electronic scale here. It's both battery operated and it comes with a um, adapter for plugging it into a wall outlet. I'm going to use a clean container, put it on the scale before turning it on. This will allow you to get an accurate read. Turn it on. And here it's registered in at grams. And I'm going to put in, shake them up first, and I'm going to put in part A until I reach my required weight. I think I'm going to go to about 280, 280 grams. All right, 285. Good enough. That's of part A. I'm now going to put in an additional 285 grams of part B. And that will bring my total to 
There we go. All right. I'm going to mix this up thoroughly. Push this aside here. And we're going to mix this up. I just hope I didn't mix up too much. This looks like a lot more than I normally would mix. You want to scrape the sides of the container. Scrape it up from the bottom. And you have, only have a five minute working time with this, so you want to work quick. All right, we're going to bring a little skull box back in here. And we're going to go ahead and pour this in, in a nice long thin stream. And it will find its own level. We'll go into the eye sockets and around the eye sockets. You see how it's covering those corner key buttons and as it's coming around the skull you'll see it filling up the opposite eye socket. Now, before I completely fill this I want to make sure that my silicone gets under those eye sockets without trapping any air. So before I completely fill this container, I'm going to stop it right here. And real quickly, I'm going to move this around. And I'm going to try and untrap any air that's under the eye sockets. Remember how I turned this around and coated the underside of the eye sockets with my release agent? I just want to simply make sure that there is no air trapped under here at all. I'm going to take a little tongue depressor and push the silicone up under the eye sockets to make sure that I'm contacting the top of the eye sockets. I can tell you, on molding skulls, if you're not careful with that, you can mess up and you can end up with great big air bubbles under the eye sockets. You don't want that. And here goes the rest of this. I'm going to fill it. And then I'm going to have to move it around again. All right, hold on a sec here. I'm going to get under the eye sockets again. Make sure there's no silicone, or there's no air, rather, trapped under the tops of those eye sockets. And this is where having this a little fuller might have been a better bet, but this will be okay. And here we go. Now, like I said, normally I would have eyeballed this, and had I, th I think had I eyeballed the amount I need, I wouldn't have this, mu this much left in the bottom of the container. It doesn't seem like a lot, but this stuff's a little costly, so, you know, you want to be a little frugal with it. Now we could take the 2500 release agent, okay, and lightly spray across the top. And this will break up those surface air bubbles. Just a couple of swipes, just like so. Also, if you rattle this a bit, the faster the better, you can work out some air bubbles that may be deeper in the product. And when they come to the surface, break them up with a quick spray of the 2500 release. Now, this will sit unattended. I'll leave this alone for a couple of hours 
to make sure it's set. Just for full disclosure and total transparency, you see a bubble rising. <laughs> Something somewhere is either trapping a bubble, trapping air, or, and this is what I think is happening, there's a slight place where the silicone is seeping into the skull somewhere. And like I said, I just, I want this to be seen by all. This way during the demolding process, if I have to suddenly cut its way loose from the skull, the mole that is, you will know why. So just for the point of full disclosure and total transparency, this bubble has been coming up since I was going to walk away from it. You see it rising again. All right, as it hits the surface, I break the bubble. I don't like bubbles. That means I'm muffed up somewheres in theirs. All right, I'm going to put my heat lamp, the same lamp I used to soften the clay. I'm going to put the lamp back over this. Let's back this out of here. You see the bubble just keeps rising and rising and rising. Now I got in there with the curved tip of this modeling tool and went under the eye socket. But it seems to be coming from the rear edge of the eye socket, which tells me there's a place where the silicone is leaking into the skull. Uh, it's slowing down considerably at this point because with the added warmth it might be starting to thicken up some. Now here comes another one. And then again, maybe not. <laughs> but uh, I was going to just take a little coffee break. Instead, I'll be sitting here babysitting this. You see, the, the surface is really starting to get gummy. So I'm hoping that wherever this bubble is coming from, that the last one that forms comes away from wherever it's happening and does not get trapped on the surface of the bone and create a defect that has to be ground out after the casting is made. I'm hoping. I'm hopeful. I'm not sure. We'll see. We shall see what we shall see. I think I'm going to have to start using a pin to break this bubble. Well, let's try the tip of a wire. A small 18 gauge wire. Oh yeah, that's good. That pops it. It's as good as a pin. There we go. There we have it. All right, looks like there's a bubble <laughs> forming in midstream as this stuff is beginning to thicken. The only thing with the silicone entering the bone or the skull somewhere is there will be silicone locked into the skull at some point. Um, on this stuff, it won't be too big a deal, I don't think, because it dries fairly clear. This did happen, come to think of it, if I recall correctly, I believe this happened during the pour for the monkey skull, the vervet monkey skull. And unfortunately, that left some residual silicone behind in the bone. And even more unfortunately, that is the 7325, and that cures green. This at least cures somewhat transparent. It's really thickening up. I just hope it stops soon enough that where the bubble is coming away from the skull, it completely comes away from the bone. 
but I gotta stop playing with this now or the surface is gonna have a little rise in it and I won't be able to put a flat top on it. The flat top I'm going to use will be one of these pieces of plywood. I have extra plywood. I will cut a strip to the size of the top of this mold. Actually just a little larger, probably about the size of the, of the top portion of this box so that there's slight overhangs. And when it's joined to the bottom piece of the mold for the underside of the skull uh, and joined with rubber bands, it will not crush down onto the silicone and deforming it. This is really thickened up by now. Yeah, this is going to become impossible to pop. It's under the surface at this point. Okay, well, all I can do is walk away. Just walk away and let it do its thing. Fingers crossed. Bye.